institutional norms, uh, expectations we have for a president that uh, have been observed by Republicans and Democrats. Uh, and maybe most importantly, uh, and, and uh, most disconcertingly, what we've seen is what some people call truth decay. <laughs> the sense that not only do we not have to tell the truth, but the truth doesn't even matter. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. The Ninth Commandment, at once the bedrock of Western civilization. Obama campaign is lashing out after news that Senator Obama's personal passport files have been breached. If Barack Obama opens up and gives his college records and applications, and if he gives his passport applications and records, I will give a check immediately for five million dollars. The fundamental purpose of speech and bearing witness is to exercise the responsibility of conveying truth to one's fellow man. All human beings, by their very emotional and spiritual nature, require and cling to truth and are obliged to honor and bear witness to it. In their suffering and death, the martyr becomes the ultimate example of spiritual attestation to truth. In the midst of worldly temptation and the quest for temporal gain. The utterance of falsehood is a profanation to the very essence of witness. Human beings cannot coexist absent the mutual confidence of being truthful to one another. I saw him walk a guy earlier with handcuffs. Like he walked by us and said he didn't do it. It was a grown man. A grown man, yeah. He's sitting in the front of the police car over there now. With. Under Obama, federal investigators went after the New York Times, Fox News, and the Associated Press. And his Justice Department spearheaded more prosecutions under the Espionage Act, a law passed 100 years ago than all previous U.S. administrations combined. But the truth doesn't even matter. If a minute portion of the population sees fit to misrepresent reality and prevaricate on a regular, systematic basis while maintaining a hidden covenant among themselves for worldly gain and control, one might call it a conspiracy against truth. And if human beings are inherently inclined toward truth, this act is in fact a conspiracy against humanity itself. What if that very select segment of the population privileging lies over truth owned close to the entire communication apparatus, methodically using it to regularly inject lie after lie into the body politic without interruption? Uh, over the last 24 hours, I think it's been somewhat downplayed about uh, the Justice Department dropping uh, charges against Michael Flynn and the fact that there is no precedent that anybody can find for uh, someone who's been charged with perjury uh, just getting off scot-free uh, that's the kind of stuff where you, you begin to uh, get worried that basic, not just institutional norms, but uh, our basic understanding of, of rule of law uh, is, 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 uh, is at risk. But the truth doesn't even matter. The lie is among the few crimes against one's fellow man that can be repeatedly carried out against many millions of individuals almost instantaneously over and over along these lines over the past few decades prevarication isn't enough some opinion leaders assume personas which are pre-constructed thereby representing themselves within a false narrative they enact as reality for the enchanted or bewildered masses. 
What if the lies are compounded unrelentingly for days, weeks, months, years, even decades? Major wars, the central banking system, the successful attack on the family and religion, and of late, public health measures surrounding the so-called COVID-19 pandemic are all predicated on a tapestry of lies masquerading as expert-endorsed and intellectually valid truths. But the truth doesn't even matter. What would happen to the population over the course of so many decades? Would it be safe to conclude that many of those comprising the body politic, those who, like faithful children, have placed their trust in state officials and media, would, after discovering a lifelong betrayal of their expectations, turn to doubt, cynicism, and fear, thereby constituting a psycho-spiritual cancer that gradually consumes the entire body politic. The steady erosion of the polity, bit by bit, is anticipated by our overlords, now slowly emerging from behind the curtain, who see fit even to suppress information and mount a wall-to-wall -wall campaign of falsehood, seeking to convince Americans and the world that their preferred candidate is the victor, believing that if this lie is repeated enough times it will, as if through some hidden alchemy, become truth and following its acclamation by official sources be worthy of eventual inclusion into years in review TV specials and our children's history textbooks. Could the overwhelming majority be faulted for becoming morally decrepit and without hope, for becoming emotionally and spiritually diseased, while at the same time willing to submit to authorities in most every aspect of their lives, not because of appeals to their inherent reason, but rather through fear of disapproval, rejection, and social exclusion. And so it goes time after time until a sufficient number of people stand up and say, enough. If, at this stage, rejection of the status quo even remains an option, If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHB at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For MemoryHoleBlog.org, this is James Tracy.